Remember, if you want more detailed information on this restoration, you can go to the links down in the bar right below the video, uh, being the links to the iBoats thread, which it has all the pictures that you could ever want on this restoration, my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Frisco Boater, and my website, friscoboater.com. Friscoboater.com has a blog that's usually updated also, uh, just like iBoats.com, but the first place to look is my iBoats.com thread for any updates. And if you want instant updates, make sure you like like my Facebook page because that's where I kind of post my thoughts as I'm doing things. So enjoy the video. Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, it is uh, Saturday of Thanksgiving week. Uh, we're now a week into um, uh, this boat. Uh, maybe a little more. Yeah, a week in. Um, and it kind of already had ups and downs and uh, I think we're uh, now got a kind of a solid uh, view of what's happening. Um, I've done a lot of research and uh, found that we're probably going to be able to do this and do it pretty good and make it just a super nice boat um, for the right amount of money. Like I said before, not really looking to make anything on this thing. I like doing this. It's uh, something that gets it up on YouTube. So, you know, I'm not real good with typing and answering questions that way. So this is my way of teaching people how to do it. It's just watch me do it uh, because whenever I try to explain it or teach somebody, we get email or text or PM. Just never works for me. So anyway, um, today is the day we're going to actually start some major deconstruction. Uh, I spent all day yesterday, which is the day uh, after Thanksgiving, uh, 2012, um, for the people watching this five years from now. <laughs> um, we uh, I spent yesterday cleaning out the garage, kind of got the, the clutter taken out of here, uh, you know, get myself some working room. Uh, still got the engine that we got to disassemble. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and, uh, but like I said, I organized my tools, got my workbench accessible, got the clutter out, which I don't know about you guys, but that really stresses me out whenever I got clutter. It just makes it not fun. So I just went through and just kind of did an initial cleaning. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll probably do more as it goes down the road, but I've got enough room now that I can work. So anyway, we're going to start taking the interior out. We're going to clear all the, the um, uh, what do you call it, carpet and things like that, get it completely um, uh, cleaned out so we can assess how bad the stringers are and how much we need to do so that way we can build a budget on how much fiberglass, resin, all that, uh, th that type of things that I need. I don't think it's going to be a ton. Uh, this is a lot smaller than the Sea Ray. So um, I'm probably guessing 15 to 20 yards of each, 1708 and a chop strand or 1.5, probably 10 gallons of resin. That's going to be really, uh, I think maybe a little over uh, what I need. So, but we'll, we'll approach that let down the road whenever we get this all out. But for right now, we're going to be taking things apart today. So let me go show you kind of how, first of all, I got the garage cleaned out, got us some, uh, some room. I got some news on an out, out drive and an engine. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to show you the, uh, what we're going to do with our engine and uh, the, the outdrive that was left over. Okay, there is the older outdrive. That is the one that came on this boat. Uh, we split the halves uh, to kind of see what was what and what was actually seized. The lower unit seems to be okay. It's the upper that's jacked up. Uh, the upper is full of rust up there in the top. There's pitting and all that kind of stuff that's notorious of the seals being bad here and water getting up in there. Or water getting into the bellows and leaking in. Um, I didn't pressure test it originally, which I should have, but I didn't. Uh, but I think we're just gonna completely go with a whole new out drive and I've already, I do believe, got these sold to a guy here locally. Um, he actually rebuilds them and uh, he gave me a good um, good chunk of change for these things. So, hadn't picked them up yet, so I don't, haven't seen any money. So, but they're split apart. The, uh, the If you look here, Look how bad the exhaust wore it out. It means it overheated. Uh, the water pump was bad. Uh, it had all kinds of issues uh, basically just ruining this. So I just don't, unless somebody's going to rebuild this, I'm not going to try to use it again. Got a good prop. I'm probably going to keep the prop. But uh, remember that drive? That's my Bravo drive. I got that one up for sale too here locally. Um, that'll provide some extra cash for the boat also. Uh, my drive is still perfectly fine. Just changed this, the drive oil in my Sea Ray, and uh, there's no water in it, so I think we're going to go ahead and let that one go because I'm going to need that drive stand for the new drive that I get. So anyway, moving on. Engine. Um, this has still not been taken apart. I'm leaving this for my son. He really, really, really wants to take this apart. This is his passion. He loves the engines. So I'm going to let him get out here with the impact wrench and teach him how to label things pull it apart correctly. Even though we're probably not going to use anything off this engine, I want him to get good practice for whenever he starts. We're going to probably restore a car for him when he turns 16. So I want to make sure he gets it 100%. 
So that's going to be his job as soon as he gets his, out of his pajamas and gets out of here and starts working. So that brings me to the engine and outdrive for replacement for this boat. Um, so at lunch, I'm going to take a ride over to a city kind of close to me and uh, it's, look at this Alpha Drive. Um, it's got the gimbal housing and everything attached to it. I know I don't need all that, but it has it and the price is right. Um, and it definitely fits what we need to do. Um, we're going to pressure test on it, make sure it's 100% uh, and uh, go from there. So anyway, the engine. Uh, I also found an engine uh, up pretty far away from me, but the, the freight is not terrible. It's a 350 mag fuel injected horizon. So that means that it has closed cooling, the whole shebang, and it's complete. That means from the uh, coupler all the way to the front of the engine, it's the same. Vortec serpentine engine, the whole, the whole nine yards. And it fits our budget also. By getting the drive at a good deal and getting this at a good deal, that puts us right where we need to be to keep this, uh, this boat in line with what we're trying to do. Um, I got some good estimates back on the interior yesterday. Um, I totally forgot I have a buddy of mine in the business and I uh, called him and he is definitely, he's on board to take care of us and to really get this thing done right. Um, I'm not sure we're going to do all kinds of fancy three-tone and all that kind of stuff in the interior. We may keep it just one color just to kind of keep cost in, in shape. It kind of depends on how much it is. But uh, being that those are high back bucket seats, it's going to be kind of high. So anyway, I, I think that we're really good. Uh, and by the fact we don't need tons and tons of uh, fiberglass materials and resin and all that stuff, I think we're going to be okay. So anyway, we're going to tear into this thing and uh, see exactly how bad the damage is and uh, get this thing cleaned up. A disposable camera. This thing's actually still pretty solid. Yeah, this is solid. Except for this little part right here. Somebody do it. Oh, take a picture of that. That's cool. Yeah, this is and this is shot right here with the bottom right there. Yeah. But we need to make sure we take care of this so we can use it as a pattern. Gotta have that as a pattern. Alright, can you get this by yourself? Wow, leave the vacuum cleaner. Alright, you can see that I've got the uh, interior out of it for the most part. Uh, we're going to get these off next. That's holding the areas over there, and it, they're totally rotten. But those are going to be easy to fix. Easy to fix. Um, these right here, we're now going to start taking out the carpet uh, and then get rid of these flotation boxes back here. If you remember, I said that what we're going to do with the flotation is we're going to try to shrink them as much as we can for motor access, and then we're going to actually use foam under the deck. Um, you know, as long as you keep these, uh, these boats dry, and don't let permeation, foam is perfectly fine underneath these decks and Glastron uses these little little things here which doesn't fill every void um, and so therefore I'm going to get rid of those and we're going to go with inflatable foam and we're going to make smaller boxes back here um, they'll still hold this boat up perfectly fine um, you can actually, if you really want to get anal with it, you can spray foam up underneath here uh, you know, in the gunnels to help out with flotation but uh, my calculations are as this is way overkill. Um, we can go with a lot smaller box, mount our batteries to them, have perfect amount of uh, access to the engine uh, you know, for the new owner, and uh, that way everybody's happy. So moving on, we're going to start pulling out this, this uh, carpet and uh, see what we got. is in there. Also, when you're tearing apart a boat that's been sitting for a while, you be real careful. You see that right there? That is a space where an animal lives. 
and uh, you could uh, tear this apart and all of a sudden have something really pissed off at you uh, whenever you're tearing, tearing into his home. So we're going to really pay attention whenever we uh, tear this apart of what is up underneath there. Now, another thing um, I found, all this for the majority um, is termite damage. Um, this, if you look at this, look at, look at it just flakes apart. We actually found a termite larva in here. Um, and so this just tells me that this thing is infected, infested with uh, termites for the most part. You see it just, just falls apart, just crumbles. Yeah, well, they may be, it's cold, so they may be gone. No, but, that's true. Um, main thing is we need to inspect. They have to treat this like we do a house. <laughs> Put some, get called Terminix. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're going to get these, uh, these boxes out of here and start really uh, tearing into it as much as we can. One bad thing about working in here with the garage door open is headroom. You just did it again too, didn't you? Look at his head already. Lean over here, Dad. He got himself on a bolt up there on the garage door. I've hit my head at least twice, so I think we're going to shut this thing so that way we quit hitting our heads on it because this has been at least four or five times. Let me show you what we got done so far. The uh, Both of the flotation pods are out and just as we thought, that's where all the water was sitting. You can actually see a wet spot right there on the hull and it's just absolutely rotten over there. Nice thing is this deck is T90, little bitty deck. Um, little small pieces of wood back there. I mean this is not bad at all but it's going to have to go all the way up to about where the end of dad's foot is right there because it's solid right up here but it's dry rot all the way up. There's really no bad problem. There's a little hole right there. But anyway, so moving on, I'm going to show you so far how much leaves and debris we've vacuumed out of this boat. And this probably weighs a good 40 or 50 pounds. <laughs> so I'm going to dump this out and we're going to finish cleaning uh, to get all this uh, junk and kind of then we're going to take the, uh, the gimbal housing apart, get that off and start assessing the damage of all this stuff and, and taking measurements. That's the big thing. We need to take measurements of how far the, the, um, the mount was up off the deck um, so it will get you in the right ballpark. I mean, obviously they didn't seem like they were any type of real science to this at all. Um, they just kind of threw it together and then used the adjustments on the uh, engine to do it. So anyway, uh, so far so good. Uh, we're seeing exactly what we expected as far as uh, rod is concerned. Uh, we just got to keep the cleanup going. There's a hole in my boat. Yeah, we kind of got ahead of ourselves the uh, GoPro, which usually sits right up there. You can see it. Uh, like an idiot, we left at uh, lunch and forgot to turn it off, so it's inside charging. But you didn't miss a whole lot. All we did is we take off our, I think it was eight bolts, and the transom assembly fell out. I mean, it's pretty simple. But uh, what you didn't see is all the, the horror in the transom. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought, but it's definitely rotten. We got rot right there with the stringer attaches to it, and we got a little bit right there. So we're going to take the whole thing out. Um, but uh, I was at first I was like, God, this thing doesn't seem to be bad at all but you know what it's going to come out no biggie um we're going to keep going with the demo process here and uh, get all this stuff out it has not been as bad as the sea ray binding stretch the imagination oh the uh see those back there the little thing that's the um, um what do you call it the swim ladder mount that's got to be replaced and then my son is over there finally disassembling the engine he farted around half the day and now it's finally getting to work he's got the carburetor off and the distributor out and that's about it.
Okay, let's see how rotten it is. <laughs> oh, wow, it looks like paper in there. Oh, it is paper. Looks like a two by six at one point in time. It was a something that was one point in time. Dang. It's just Look a at that. Yeah, all it does, that's all it was. It's fiberglass holding us in. Wow. That's just amazing to me. Wow. It's wet. Really wet. Well, here is some uh, interesting stuff to see. Look at this. See it jiggling? There's water in the motor mounts just hanging out there. This is why you have to seal everything so good. Look at this. It's just, all it is is mush down in there. It's all it is, just standing water. All right, I think I'm done for the day. Uh, my back's hurting. <laughs> and uh, it's about, oh, five o'clock. And I have a poker game in an hour and a half. So I'm gonna go eat me some dinner, take a shower, clean up. So what I found here that works really well, and this did not work on my C-Ray because I guess the glass was thicker, but this Dremel Multimax with this particular uh, end here does a great job for cutting the skin along here for the fiberglass, which just works wonderfully. It able, makes it nice and neat. I think I'm done. Uh, I've got all the wiring hanging out there. Gimbal's off. I've got to strip the transom. My goal is in another two weeks to have this thing completely ground Actually, so we're coming up on the 1st of December. I would say by Christmas, my goal is to be ready to put new wood in. Maybe even sooner than that. That would be my goal. So we'll see how we stick to that because honestly, this is going so far, so fast. Um, I just got to get the rest out. So I will see you guys tomorrow.